by popular request, a 100,000 milliamp power power bank from eBay, where they seem to be having a competition to see who can put up the most inflated figure. So this one does say 100,000 milliamp power. And it's got the solar panel in the front for charging it as well. Um, and the little indicator lights that in even the slightest sniff of light, it starts going to its little sort of uh, charging routine. And I know that some of these uh, will go into that charging routine and actually draw more current flashing their LEDs than is actually going in from the solar panel. So that's kind of counterproductive at times. It has a little LED in the front. If you double click it, it lights up. It looks like a straw hat LED. And it's got the two outputs. Um, one of is apparently rated one amp and one's two point one amp. And as with these things, the usual arrangement is they're pretty much probably in parallel. But the only difference is that the resistor array on the data pins is set to indicate to the device it's plugged in that it can draw either the 1 amp or the 2.1 amp. It's just for compatibility, really. And, of course, it's got the micro USB charging port. So this one came from a UK seller for speed. Um, and it's uh, from a seller called Happy Easy Buy O2. And it cost £10.35 plus £2.53 shipping, so not bad, even though it really isn't 100,000 milliamp hour by a long chalk. But you kind of guessed that, didn't you? It'd be nice if it was 100,000 milliamp hour, 100 amp hour pack in this. Mind you, I wouldn't like it when it went wrong right enough. So um, it would be quite neat. However, um, notable instructions, the power bank enjoys fashion design and is portable to carry, and it can be charged for more than 500 circles use and prepare contingency. Excellent. Uh, it also has a wee disclaimer here. It says, timely charging apply to most smartphones, but not yours. So let's uh, take a closer look at this. Now, I have tested this, and uh, if I plug this in, oh, actually, I'll plug the, the meter in first, and that in there, the little test load, and to be fair, it does, if I wind this up here, it goes right up to 2 amp. Let's keep going. should use the other one with the, with the coarser setting knob on it. So 1.7, 1.8. So watch the voltage. It's dropping about 4.3 volts. 2.1. Coming up, and then it suddenly drops down. Yeah, so it is rated. It can put out two amps. I'll test it thermally afterwards to see how that fares. It's got that usual annoying quirk that these intelligent ones have, where um, if it's the one that you have to press the button to start it up, if you press the button and the load is too light, it will turn off automatically after 20 seconds. And the, the trip threshold here is the load has to be more than about 100 milliamps. Otherwise, it is going to cut out. Now, I've already had this one open. I, I, it turns out that I opened it the completely wrong way. And it was making interesting sort of... I thought this was plastic, and I was like... First I got this end open, and then I was prizing it aside. Took a bit of effort to get out. Turns out that uh, there's a much easier way to open it, and that is, is these little panels at the side. If you lift these off... Let's see if I can just slip the knife underneath. They're just little stickers. It reveals a couple of screws on either side. This is significant. Because this gives easy access. Uh, there is also a double-sided sticky pad inside. So to get the, this panel off, the one opposite the end from the, uh, the button, um, take these two screws out. Uh, they might not come out that well now because I used force before. Yeah, I don't think they're going to come out that easy because I used force. I might have to use force again as a result of that. I think I'm going to have to use force again. Not to worry, let's, uh, let's use the force. And I'll put some pressure on it and then try and unscrew them. That might work. Oh, that's it coming out now. They're not very long screws, which is good because they're pointy, and if they were long screws, they'd go right into the lithium pack inside, but they do have proper clearance. So let's uh, get this other screw out. So once you remove the two screws at this end, that's this panel is released, and it swings up. Spudger just to apply a little leverage on it. Oop. So it swings up, and it just unhooks from the other end. And I've already tested the cells. There are two sandwiched together. 
just connected in parallel, no protection circuitry in the cell itself, but that is dealt with in the board. And they appear to be two 2,600 milliamp power cells, giving a total of about 5,200 milliamp power, so just over 5 amp power, which is okay for a battery pack this size. It's not the 100,000 milliamp power, but you know what do you expect for a tenner, and the size, and the fact it's 200 grams. So I've, what I've not done so far is take these screws out. Look, these ones come out much easier when you've not used force. And now I'm expecting the solar panel side to hinge up, if everything goes to plan. Yeah. Nice. And that should reveal all the circuitry as well, which is heat staked in. Okay, that is just a little uh, straw hat style LED. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Earlier on I was probing about and there was D plus and D minus. I don't know what they're actually for because I probed, I thought that was a battery connection but got zero volts. But they've got, uh, well actually that is D plus and this one's marked B plus and then the solar panel uh, connections. The solar panel connections that are not, they're not using polarised wire. I might actually just uh, snap the solar panel off. No, I'll leave the solar panel connected at the moment. So uh, the chip rather predictably has no number. Uh, some of you have mentioned the number maybe in the bottom, but that kind of like makes it a bit of a, a bit destructive to find the number. The uh, it's marked three R three the inductor three point three micro henrys, or is that going to be milli henrys for a little inductor that size? Um, other things worthy of note: eight two o five MOSFET package, I believe that is. Um, a little charge control chip, 4506, 4606 four, actually, 4606, let's see if you can actually see that, you might not be able to actually see that, I'll give you a look anyway, nah it's not that great, is this screen a wee bit darker than normal, I think it is actually, I may have the intensity turned down just a tad, uh, really that's fundamentally about it isn't it, oh things worthy of note, I'm going to test this for uh, Oh, I've just pulled one of the leads, the solar leads off anyway, so I might as well snap them off. Um, the... What was I going to say there? What was I going to say? I was going to say before I get distracted with that lead coming off. Let's turn the little LED off. I'm going to test this thermally, and I was going to say something else. Mm, I forgot what I was going to say. Let me think, let me think. What was I going to say? Damn. I forgot what I was going to say. Was it, was it important? Probably. Anyway, I'm going to uh, pause momentarily while I test this to see what sort of temperature it gets up to and put a decent load in it. Um, and then uh, I'll let you know what sort of... Oh yes, that's what I was going to say. When I put it on to charge, it charged for most of its full charge. I drained this completely flat um, by putting a modest load in it, just an LED light. Um, and then I charged it up. It charged at 1.5 amps. So I'm guessing... I, I also um, used the clamp meter around these wires. Uh, and compared it to the uh, power monitor, the USB monitor I was looking at, and it did, it was also 1.5 amps. I don't think it's actually using the the inductor to actually regulate the charge. I think that's just going to be a resistive thing, possibly based around that chip. But I'm going to check that out right now and be back in a moment to let you know the results. Okay, let's try the discharge uh, test first. So this is currently uh, supplying this uh, test load at 2 amps. So let's get the thermal imaging camera, and the only thing that's really hot on the circuit board is the inductor, 87 degrees Celsius, which isn't, you know, it's not that dramatic, to be honest. There's nothing really obviously hot. The switching component, I'm not even sure what the switching component is because I can't see it heating up. Is it this little, uh, is this a, a dual MOSFET possibly being used for that switching? It could well be. So the next test I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that to discharge for a while and then I'm going to start charging it and I'm going to see if uh, which component gets hot for the charging cycle. So now it's charging and the two components are getting hot are uh, this one here, 63 degrees Celsius, and this one here, 45 degrees Celsius. The hottest there, the 63 degrees centigrade one, is just a diode in the input. It's a 3 amp Schottky diode, SS34. Uh, the other component that's getting warm is the inductor. Not super hot, but warm. And I'm just wondering if it's purely 
permanently in series with the cell. I don't know if this is actually being used to switch regulate because certainly when I used the clamp meter around these cables earlier on it seemed to be exactly the same current that was coming out the charger. So um, I'm not really sure how it's limiting the current there unless it's just relying on the sort of impedance of, well, the sort of resistance of this under DC conditions and the drop of a diode. I'm not sure. Certainly nothing's getting majorly hot. This uh, component down here, the little 8-pin chip, is actually just a MOSFET. That's why, basically, it wasn't getting hot, um, because it's a really well-rated MOSFET, unlike the last thing I looked at. This one, uh, what was it called? Uh, it's a... Uh, Four six zero six, and it is just a, a generic dual MOSFET. So, um, <coughs> summary of this unit: it's not hundred thousand milliamp power, but it's actually quite nicely made. The solar panel is pretty much a token gesture novelty. Um, you've got the two uh, lithium cells sandwiched taped together, just sort of taped together, uh, rated about two thousand six hundred milliamp per each. So, I'd say it's a five amp power pack that can comfortably put out the two amps required and. It charges quite quickly, and it's got the light in the front, and it's got these modular panels that come off quite easily that are made of metal. So, other than the fact, you know, they're faking the figures a wee bit, if they just said 5,000 milliamp power pack, um, it would actually be quite a respectable little pack. It's quite a, it's quite a neat little pack. Um, can't really find anything really obviously bad to say about it, other than it's uh, falsified ratings. Um, which we kind of expected anyway. So um, it's all right. I think this is a keeper, really. Uh, this, uh, you don't know the quality of the lithium cells. You just don't know how safe they're going to be unless you buy from an absolutely 100% reputable brand. So I couldn't say how, you know, robust and, you know, how stable these are, uh, which is always a bit of the downside of buying something cheap. But as long as you use common sense and don't tuck them into combustible ears, as long as you store them in an area that's not going to go on fire if something goes horribly wrong, to be honest, that applies to every power bank. Um, you know, you shouldn't really just uh, store them in places that are full of combustibles, because anything with a lithium battery can potentially go on fire at some point. Was that a bit, was that a bit scaremongering? Mm, not really intended that way, but you know, there always is that risk. But um, particularly while uh, charging, um, oh, charging. This uh, cut off about 3 volts and it, the charging terminated at just under 4.2, so that aspect of it is absolutely fine. So it's quite neat. I quite like the layout of the circuit board. It's really impressive how cool it remains. Uh, I know the inductor gets hot when it's uh, putting out the full current, but uh, other than that, it's really not too bad. And the little light in the front is quite useful as well. Uh, so it's quite a neat little power bank.